So welcome to episode five. We are building a mobile application in Flutterflow. Hope you're enjoying the series so far. We're gonna extend all of the good work that we did in the previous episode, and we're now gonna introduce components into our application. A couple of them will be reusable, which is gonna obviously promote good reusability within our application. But the key one is gonna allow us to then get ready to collect data from our users to then ultimately assist that in our database. Without further ado, let's get into the video and let's get cracking. Okay, so this is where we left the previous episode in this particular series. We've pretty well much got the foundation widgets in place for our goals page. Now, if you are following along and you would like to cross-check the work that you have done in the previous episode, then please do check the link in the description because it contains the link to this particular project. Now, you can use that, as I said, to cross-check, or if you'd like to start from this particular point onwards, then please use that link as well. So we're now gonna now move on to the next part where we are gonna create a dedicated area for providing the ability to create the goal with inside our application. So how are we going to do that? Well, we've got two choices. We could create another page that would then allow the user to key in all those details, hit save, and then of course the goal would then be presented with inside the UI, but we're going to create a component. And that component we're going to display to the bottom part of our application. So that's a great thing about a component is that we can either use a reusable component, so we can use the same uh, kind of functionality throughout our application, or we can use it to our advantage to use the features of inside of Flutterflow to display in kind of more strategic locations within inside our application. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the, the component is going to appear from the bottom part of the application. The user is going to complete those details. And of course, those details are then going to be saved to the database and then will be reflected on the, on the main goals page when we've kind of hooked all of that stuff up. So let's now move on and let's create our component. Okay, to create our component then in Flutterflow, we've got a little dedicated location with inside our project for our components, and that's this components folder that I've already created. Of course, if you're creating your own projects in Flutterflow, you need to create that folder yourself, but you don't have to. You can keep it all in the same folder if you would like, but I've got one dedicated for my components. And I've also got a folder called common as well. So if these are reusable components, like little kind of UI elements that I just want to reuse, then I'll also put those in the common folder as well. And we will do that actually in this particular series because there's a couple of common components that we will create. And let's now create our goal creation components. So inside the components uh, folder, just as I over the top there, I'm just going to right click, I'm going to say add component, and I'm going to say create blank. Let's give our component the name. So create goal component, you can see here I can put a description if I wanted to for my component, we don't need that, hit create component. And here we are back into a dedicated kind of UI view for our component. Now the, you can see here, this is the kind of the top level, there's nothing technically there in terms of anything you see. We now need to create a child of the actual component itself. So hit the plus, let's click on container, that's gonna be our kind of our parent for our component. Now I'm gonna just change the width down here, I'm gonna take out the width for 100, I'm gonna change that to infinity. So what this will basically mean is that when we embed or we put this particular component on our page, then it will inherit the kind of dimensions of the parent. Okay, so this is going to take up the full width of wherever we place this particular component. Now we're going to change the height. Now this is currently 100. Let's change that now. We're going to put 410 here. I think that's fine for this particular application. Let's just drag that out here and you can see here that the, the height has now been constrained. Now let's now commence with a little bit of styling. So with our container, what I'm going to do is this is going to kind of pop up from the bottom. So we're going to kind of just sort of bring the edges. We're going to kind of curve the edges of our particular container. So just going to move down here to a border radius. Here is the top left. Let's just put 16 in there and the top right, I'm going to put 16. If I just click away, you can see here now we've kind of got little rounded edges. So go back to container. Now everything else I think set here is quite acceptable. We don't need to change the, the fill color. That is, that is just our back secondary background color. Now, of course, if I change this to light and dark mode, you can see that this is just kind of got the color whether if we're actually in a dark theme. And of course, we will set that later on with inside this particular series. Let's just go back to light mode there. Let's carry on building out our container. So next up, we're going to be putting widgets with inside our container. So we're going to have these all kind of stacked uh, vertically, of course, so we're going to need a column widget. So just choose the column there. And I'm just going to change this to uh, scroll uh, scrolling column like that. Just like to keep that uniform across the application. Now this will be scrolling. And the reason being is, is because 
you might in your application would want to add more and more widgets or you might want to kind of have conditional visibility so you might want to display widgets under a certain situation which means if you constrain the height of this particular component being displayed on the page then you're going to want to give the user the ability to scroll up and down with inside that constrained part of your user interface so i'm just going to naturally put her scrolling column in here um, and of course when when this sort of plays out you might find that when the user uh, hits the submit button or the create uh, goal button there they we're going to have a form validator which is going to say oh you need to complete this field you need to complete this field what that will mean is that the ui will kind of expand out and then you could you will need to scroll up and down um so that's i'm just going to put a scrolling column in there for now and, and what we're going to do on the right hand side here is just mark that as scrollable and of course it will be primary on here at that particular moment so with all that set let's carry on what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create and simulate a kind of like a little drag handle at the top of the container. Something that's quite common with inside applications. We're not going to make this particular uh, sort of part of application draggle, but it's nice to have that just at the top. And the way that we do that is we're just going to hit the little plus and hit the row. And then with inside that row, I'm just going to then add a container. Now this container I'm going to size up with inside the application. So let's set the width to be 50 and then the height I'm going to set as a four like that. And then I'm just going to select a suitable fill color. So just choose the uh, option there to bring up the color kind of palette here. And I'm just going to use Ascent to like that. So it's just going to give it a bit of a gray color there just at the top. Now with our actual row, let's now just center everything up. So just choose the center there like that. So what I'm going to now do is just click on the actual container itself. And this is where I could give the padding just a top there, just to kind of just bring it off the top there by 12. If I just press away, look, you can see that we've got that displayed. Now, actually, I'm not quite happy with the color there. I think that looks just a little bit too harsh. So I'm just going to click back on container here. Now I can take the ascent color here. I can choose the fill color option and I can actually bring this down to a percentage. We're going to kind of make this sort of semi kind of translucent to some extent. Very down to 50% let's just click away see how that's looking that's looking a little bit better now so it's not quite so harsh on the eye okay so now that is done this is where I now want to create this reusable component because I'm going to use this component in other components as well now the great thing about having a reusable component is that you can then change it in one location and then it will be reflected across the whole of your application so how do we do that let's create this next component so we just need to click on the row here like this I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to say convert to component so just select that and I'm going to give my new component a name if I call this bottom bar top divider component, hit create component, and then you'll see, you won't see much difference here, but if I go back to then the create goal component, you're gonna see now that that is now represented by this kind of new kind of component indicator here with kind of this blue look to the typeface. So this is great, that's now reusable. That's what that tells us. So that's great, we've got that in place. Let's now carry on with our widget creation here. So let's create a, another row like that. And this is now going to display the heading of our component. So I'm just going to add the row, now hit the plus, let's add the text in like that. Let's now style the text a little bit. So let's just go down here and select the uh, heading medium like that. I think that'll be quite good. That's good enough. I'm now just going to go back to the row like that and let's now just pad this out here. So I'm going to choose a 16 here and then a 16 on the right like that. That's looking good. And that is pretty well much our heading. Now, again, this heading we can now use throughout our application. Now, we're going to create a number of these particular components where we're going to reuse this heading. So, of course, it makes sense to turn this into a component. So just right click on the row. Let's say convert to component. Let's give the component a name. So there it is, it's called bottom bar heading component, hit create component. You can see that I've got that here, but if I just go back to our create goal, uh, create goal component, you can now see that that's nicely positioned here, just underneath the top, uh, the, the other components that we've got here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag these into the common folder like that, and just drag that into the common folder as well. So they're all now nicely tucked away. Now, of course, you're then gonna want to then know, well, how do we turn this from saying hello world into some text that we need to include in there. Well, we're gonna create a component parameter and that's done simply by moving into the specific 
component itself. So here we are, the bottom bar heading component. Let's go up to the top right here. Let's create a component parameter. Let's add a parameter. Let's give this a name. So this is going to be title, and this is going to be a type string. I'm just going to pass a piece of text into this. It is going to be required. So every time we add this to the UI, um, we're going to want to always provide a value. So just hit create there like that. And then what we can then do is we can say, well, this piece of text, we can then hook onto that component parameter. That's done quite simply by with the text being selected, move up over to where it says text, choose a selector. Component parameters are already expanded for us. You can see here is the title that we just created. So just select title. Now I'm going to give this a UI builder value. So this is purely for display only. So I'm just going to type in the word title here. And then in the UI, the word title will be represented instead of it saying hello world. But again, remember, this is just a UI thing. It won't, it won't display that with inside your application. So just hit confirm. Oh, I need to put a space in here as well. Sorry, every string requires a, a default value. So I'm just going to put a space, hit confirm firm like that and you can now see that that says title now if I now go back to our create goal component what I can now do is I can now select this particular component and then on the bottom right hand corner I can then give this a title so just type in create goal and there you have we have our title Okay, so just notice that um, I think the size of the typeface there is a little bit too big for me. So um, if you recall, when I went, when I created this, if I hit on title, you can see here that the headline medium has currently got a font size of 20 out, 28. So I could come in here and I could change the value here to then be, say, 24, which I think will give it a nice sort of size. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to customize the headline medium uh, kind of uh, sort of theme with inside our project to update that to then say 24. So let's now move back over to that. Let's click on the little palette. Let's go to our topography and let's just move where it says here to 28. Let's just also convert that then to 24 like that. So just brought it a little bit smaller. Now headline small, we can also change as well, perhaps down to then 22 like that. It just makes it a little bit smaller. So move back over to our project now and I can now reapply. If I was to now just go here and I was just to press away and then go back there again and just choose headline medium, you can now see it successfully changed it now to 24. So everything is now gonna pick that up. So that's pretty well much it for that particular component. So back within our create goal component, let's continue to add our widget. So here is our scrolling column. Hit the plus here. Let's create some text fields. So this will take receipt of the user's input. So let's create a text field there. Let's set some styling on this. So what we can do, we can either set the properties and uh, of the actual text field itself. Um, but you'd be pleased to know that we, I will spare you the pain of updating all of this to include the style. We've actually got a theme style that we can actually apply to this particular widget. So I'm just going to choose the text field single row there. And if you look down here now, you'll find that all of these values have kind of all been sort of updated and pretty well much. Um, like I said, there's nothing specific here other than really styling. Um, so just please have a look at that. You can look at a bit of a before and after and you'll get an idea of kind of all the different sort of colors that kind of get set and all the values that kind of get set. So just what I'm going to do though is I'm just going to make a slight little adjustment here to then the text field itself because we need to put some uh, sort of padding here to the left and to the right. So I'm just going to go here. I'm just going to type in 16 and I'm going to type 16 there just to kind of bring it off of the size. I'm going to click away. We've now got what looks like now a reasonable, a reasonably styled sort of text field as well. So I'm just going to duplicate this particular one. So just right click and say duplicate. Now with that selected, I'm just going to go up to this particular widget styling here and you'll see I've got a multi row here. So just select that and the the styling will now again change. We've lost our padding, but that's okay. We can just put that back in like that. And there we have a kind of a, a multi-line text of a widget. And again, if you just look down here, some various sort of properties being set, but the key ones, um, if I just scroll down here to the bottom here, you can see that I've got a keyboard type is multi-line up there. And if I go back to the top, you'll see if I'll probably right to the top there, if I get to it, you can see that I've got max lines of four. So that's the difference between kind of not setting it and you've got a single row or just set four or five or six, however, not, <laughs> not like that, five or six or seven, you can have as many as you like. So I'm just gonna have four in my application. I think that's enough to put a description in for the application. Excuse the interruption in your learning, but I just wanted to reach out to you to let you know about the Digital Pros No Code Academy. This particular private community is fantastic. It's got all of my
all my training content there. Lots of written articles, question and answers, a code library, lots of topics around the no code space and a fantastic community. Please do check the link in the description. It'd be great to have you part of the community. So the next widget that we're going to add is a drop down widget. Now this is going to be used to kind of allow us to set the status of our goal. Now if I just type in here drop down like that you'll see that we've got a form element we can add in so just choose a drop down. Now the great thing is I've also got some styling that we can apply to this to save a little bit of time in this particular series. Now the only difference here with this particular style is it also includes some defined options which we're going to use in this particular application. Of course you could add in further options if you like it's quite straightforward. Got some an initial option that's kind of there and just some hint text and all that kind of stuff. So again it's just properties that I've actually set on that particular style. So I'm just going to now set the padding here on the 16 on the left and 16 on the right just to bring that in. You can see everything's all nicely kind of tucked together. We're going to adjust that in just a moment. Now we've got that in place let's add another option just hit plus and let's now look for a button so choose button now what I've got with the button is I have I actually haven't created a theme style widget on purpose here because we're going to create that ourselves and then we can then apply that to then other buttons with inside our application. So let's style this button up to how we want it first. So if I just move down here to the right hand side, just set some values here. So you can see here it's kind of got like a bit of a shadow under there. We don't want any of that. So let's with the elevation, just select zero on that. We don't want any of that. Don't want any borders on our button. It's going to be nice and clean. So just set that as zero. The height I'm just going to select as 50. It's going to make it just a little bit larger. Uh, and what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to set the width out there to be infinity for this particular example. So that stretches it right across. I'm just going to also set then uh, 16 on the left there and 16 on the right. So that's certainly all nicely set up for us. But we're just going to change the label of the button just to say create there for our application. So there we go. So we kind of got a nice button. And of course, we're going to want to now reuse that for outside our application. Let's create a theme style widget. So with the button selected, just right click. And we're just going to now say save as a theme style widget. Select that. Let's give our button names. So I'm going to call this one button underscore primary like that. It's going to be our primary style button. A secondary one could be then the like the red button to then like delete or cancel or something like that. So let's hit create style. So that's all nicely created for us. We can now apply that now to buttons. And you can see now I've got that cre sort of created. I can go up to the theme style widget there. Um, and oh, there's a bit of a bit of a quirk actually in Flutterflow because um, I'm, I'm finding this is happening. This may have created OK for you. If I go back into then the theme here and go to the theme widgets, you can see that my button primary is currently set up as a container, which is kind of a bit odd. If I just say yes to that, you'll see it's, it's currently a container. So it hasn't kind of applied it correctly. So there's a little bit of a quirk in Flutterflow, but hopefully they would have resolved that when you're watching this. So I'm just going to delete that again here. Just select that. Let's just go back into our application. Let's now just try that again. Just got that selected. I'm going to select it here this time and say save as a theme style widget. So I'm going to say button primary like that. Just hit create style. There you go. That's worked this time because the widget styling is now set to button primary. So of course, I've now got this available to me to apply to any button within inside the application. Of course, I can go back to then the theme style widgets and you can see now I've got my base element here as button primary. So a little live quirk there, which we've kind of resolved together. So just in case that is still happening for you, but that's certainly been there for a little while because I've had that before. So let's now just sort out that spacing now. So let's set our scrolling column here. Let's set some spacing up. So I've got then 12 there and the end spacing I'm just going to set as 12 as well. So that really the reason why I've done that, uh, end spacing of 12 is, is because if the items sort of scroll off the bottom of the screen. I want the scroll to have a little bit of gap when the user kind of scrolls back to the top. OK, by us not putting that value, it means that our widgets will, will likely or could set right at the bottom of our mobile application. So I've kind of just forced a little bit of spacing in there. OK, so now everything's in place. I'm just going to quickly go through now. I'm just going to rename all of these widgets. OK, so there's all of the widgets all now be renamed. Um, just one little adjustment I'm going to make is that I, I'm not particularly too happy with the gap here. It seems a little bit too wide for me. I've kind of applied 16 pixels. So I'm just going to go through now and I'm just going to make adjustments here just to kind of bring that a little bit more narrower. 
So we go, I've just made everything kind of 12 pixels. You can see the title also needs to be adjusted. So I'm just going to go to my, uh, my bottom bar heading component. I'm just going to go to the row here. And I'm just going to also adjust those to 12. Now the good thing about this, of course, is if you had this component applied right across your application, then these adjustments would then be applied right across. I'll come back and rename all of these later on. So that is pretty well much the uh, kind of the, the key UI features that we need for us creating a goal. Um, that sets us up now not quite nicely now for the next bit. Yeah.